artist. Maybe a ballerina. An architect. The astronaut. An author or work for National Geographic. A limnologist. A limnologist is someone who studies uh, inland lakes and streams. A pilot because I enjoyed flying. My parents were missionaries and so we, we flew around the world when I was young. An accountant. I liked the order and structure and how everything always had one right answer. Mm -hmm. But then I majored in accounting and found out I wasn't good at it. Constantly? No. I don't remember. I didn't ever play make-believe. Or if I did, we were just playing gun fighting or sword fighting. Military make-believe? We played house. I was the mom most of the time. Play doctor and we played school and most often that I would play is one of an explorer. Explorer. We lived out in the country and so we would go explore in the woods, along the river. When American Idol came out, everybody also pretended to be on that stage singing and yeah, I've been there and done that and I didn't have those parents that were like, you're an awesome singer, audition. They were kind of like, yeah, know your place, maybe you shouldn't do that. This one. <laughs> I think I'd choose retirement. <laughs> a writer? A cook. I think something that would be a, a concrete way of helping people, like either medical work or farming to grow food for people. Anything that allowed me to be creative. Something where I taught students how to build um, a boat, uh, a wooden boat, probably a sailboat, and then um, kind of the capstone for the project would be to sail that boat, so teach them sailing, and then sail it on like a one to two week adventure where we did hiking and snorkeling and uh, all sorts of things. I am obsessed with Discovery Channel and Shark Week that comes out in July, and if I could be those people that go out and like tag great white sharks and get to uh, watch them when they jump out of the water down in South Africa and videotape all of that and just be there for that experience, yeah, absolutely. That's like bucket list job right there. Traveling photographer, I would love to work for like for National Geographic or to travel on my own and to blog and I take photos for them. Have like a million subscribers to my Instagram and <laughs> instead of me having to pay for travel, I would rather have them pay me. And just live off of traveling and cultures. Just being able to see every event that happens here. A lot of people don't get to do that, um, but I get to see all the plays, the musicals, the IB um, music recitals. And it's just awesome to see the, the talent and things that students do here. And the part I like about my MIP coordinator job is I really like working with teachers and working with, with people. I really enjoy the one on one time to help people think through things and try to figure out what they want to do, how to make things work, how to, how to solve problems. Actually beginning with uh, a problem that needs to be solved, doing the research, and then creating something visual. Part I like about my teaching, I can learn all the time. Teaching is not only about teaching, it's about learning how to teach. I learn new content, I learn new ways of teaching, I learn new ways of interacting with students. I really like finding or trying to find interesting ways to help kids learn the content. Watching students have aha moments in class. I also love seeing their confidence grow as they learn how to do new things. came to Korea as a missionary first, so then I went back and went to seminary in the U.S. and was ordained and served a church for a couple of years. Before becoming a teacher, I worked as a research scientist for three years. I was an analytical chemist. What I did was I would analyze all the samples, such as new materials that was invented. Then I would take that and uh, analyze what ingredient went into it and see what catalyst they used. I studied acting, um, and as a part of being an actor, I've had a lot of different jobs. I guess you could call them careers, uh, as, I, as I was paying the rent. Taught screenwriting, worked as a bartender, paralegal, flight attendant, retail, construction. After I graduated college, I had no idea what I was going to do. I had an English and psych degree, and I was like, what am I going to do with those two degrees? And my father uh, had me work with him 
um, at his dental laboratory and I learned how difficult it was to work during that time and I learned how much goes into making a single tooth. I was a lifeguard in my hometown and then I was a lifeguard at the camp that Mr. Kaskin and I met at. And I also worked at store when I was in college that sold dresses and shoes and gloves for little girls who wanted to do pageants. I had a career in retina surgery for several years prior to starting teaching. That is what my graduate degree is in and I worked on the Navajo reservation in Arizona and I would do um, surgeries for retinal detachments, macular degeneration, all that fun stuff, lots of blood and guts, and I did enjoy it. I don't like the politics and bureaucracy that come along with big medicine in America, part of the reason I got out of it, and I also just miss teaching. Different careers here at TCIS, and I worked in the boarding program. I also have been student life minister here at TCIS. My granddad's a potato farmer, so I've done potato farming for probably eight or nine summers. Um, inside salesman slash parts manager for a crane company in Nashville, Tennessee. I also worked at Chick-fil-A. Um, Chick-fil-A lovers out there, it's as good as it sounds. Even just watching television shows or watching advertisements on TV and just watching uh, whatever movies, how culture is changing around us, I think those things all inform us of like what is happening in the news and politics and these things will grow and develop our interests and what we're passionate about. Because you're going to be doing this job hopefully for a lot of your life. And so do something that you're going to have fun doing. You don't want to be stuck in a job that you're not having fun at. Um, it doesn't have to be fun, but I recommend that you enjoy doing it. Later on, hard times are going to come, or bad times are going to come, or you're going to be stressed out. And when you're doing something that you really, really enjoy, those things don't matter as much. There are a lot of different ways that you can marry your talents with your passions. You know, it may be hard work, but it's worth pursuing. When you create something and you put your passion and your love into it and, you know, your talents and things, it's easy to associate your value with your product. And when somebody criticizes the product, you can, you can get defensive, you can get hurt. Learn to value criticism for what it's worth. Um, it'll help you grow, it'll help you come up with better solutions, better products than you were ever capable of without it. Alright, don't give up after a week, don't give up after a month, but if you've put in the time, if you've put in the effort, and you have given it all you've got, you said, I'm doing my best, to, to really be in this job and give it a shot and it still just isn't you, move on. They're gonna find someone who's, who can fill that role um, and you can move on and find something that maybe is more of a better fit for you. I think the goal in life is to serve people and to give back to people. And I think if you, if you do that, you'll find that that is what's gonna make you happy. I had no idea there was even, I didn't even know about international schools when I was in high school or university. So I couldn't have thought about being, working in an international school, but everything I've done along the way has helped me to prepare for this job. So I think the most important thing is learning how to learn and being prepared for what the future may hold as opposed to nailing down a specific career right now. But, but, keeping things open and trying not to shut doors, but to open more doors. Be ready for whatever the future might hold. Good luck. <laughs>